Well, tomorrow will mark a milestone for those who live in North Carolina's sixth congressional district. For the first time in nearly three decades, tonight's newsmaker's name won't be on the ballot. He announced last year he wouldn't run for another term in 2014 and would retire. And recently, I had an opportunity to speak with Congressman Howard Coble about his memories, accomplishments, regrets, and a few other things. It would be hard to name a more consistent, influential, and respected figure in central North Carolina politics than Howard Coble. He made his first run for Congress in 1984. We were in the old Guilford Courthouse, I think, early in the campaign. And right. A member of the media said, Howard, what are you going to do when you go to Washington? And I just instinctively thought, well, this budget is out of control, spending is right. out of control. I said, I'm going to Washington armed with a sharp pencil. The sharp pencil image would become a part of each campaign, and at this recent reception at UNC Greensboro, to which Coble donated all his congressional papers, the memorabilia table featured not only the pencil, but images of the key to his success, his consistent presence in the district. He never passed up an opportunity to come home and speak to a group or ride in a parade. What are you going to miss the most? Not the Washington airport. <laughs> the dealing with folks back home, right. the, uh, the accessibility. Why retire now? Probably my back. Okay. Uh, I have skin cancer, which is, it continues to plague me, but not as consistently as the back. The back is generously laced with pain every day. As a result of congressional redistricting, we have eight new counties in addition to the two partial two counties that we had before. So it would be harder for you to get around. It these. would be. Now that you are retiring, do you regret not taking the congressional pension? <laughs> the most stupid uh, <laughs> financial decision I ever made. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? Well, I would be well healed uh, yeah. if I had done that. The reason I did that, it sounds naive, I know, Neil, but it is my belief that taxpayers pay my salary along with every member of Congress. I don't know that they should pay my c c congressional pension as well. What has been your most significant accomplishment in Congress? What have you brought home to the district that you're proudest of? Furniture, textiles, <coughs> and tobacco, tobacco were our bread and butter industries. And I, and I tried to vote in favor of those three as consistently as I could, although sometimes the tobacco vote becomes hated. Could the government have done more to help them, do you think? Probably. I mean, you were there yeah. waving their flag so much. Yeah. But, but, but there, there, there were some of my colleagues who would be even Republicans and Democrats, but alike, mostly Democrats, were so adamantly opposed to some of those bills, they wouldn't even speak to me for days. What has been your biggest mistake? Probably voting to dispatch troops to Iraq. Did you feel misled after that vote? And I reiterate what I said about President George W. Bush. I don't think he deceived us. Now, the deception may have occurred on, during his watch. Coble's most difficult day happened before that vote, but despite all the vivid and memorable images of 9-11, one stands out in particular. We all stood on the, most of us in the house stood on the Capitol steps Insane. saying, God bless America. God bless America. That was very, very moving. I get I emotional when I think about it. Although Coble's always taken what he does seriously, he doesn't take himself that way. He became famous for his colorful jackets, including the one he's wearing in the portrait, which will hang in the UNCG library. It's that type of style that landed him the number one spot on a BuzzFeed.com list. How does it feel to have been named the sexiest bachelor in Congress? <laughs> I think it was a joke. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I told somebody that. I, I, I think it's a joke. That had to make you feel pretty good, though. Oh, it did. It, it was a good, good job back and forth. What piece of advice do you have for the person who's going to replace you? Every chance you get right at the Christmas break. But be accessible. And that's going to involve coming home. And now Howard Coble is coming home for good. He says he hasn't given much thought to what he'll do in retirement, but he does plan to stay in the Greensboro area, and we wish him well.